Hi fellow bibliophiles and welcome back to Blatantly Bookish. I'm Marissa and today I'm here with a Paper Crane Conversations and also sort of currently reading kind of video. It's a more chatty, relaxed video and um, if you haven't seen them before you can check out some of the others I've done in the past. Um, but basically I'm just going to sit here and make a paper crane and chat with you guys. So if you want to grab a cup of tea or um, you know something to munch on while you listen and watch, uh, feel free. So first I will chat a little bit about uh, my life and uh, why it is that I have not made a video in so long. It's been a little too long since I've made a video and I'm not super okay with that, but uh, extenuating circumstances. Um, so last Monday I was doing yoga because I love yoga and it's a lot of fun, but I heard a pop in my knee and it didn't hurt at all. But a few days later, I started getting pain in my knee, and um, yes, long and the short of it is, I may or may not have a torn meniscus in my right knee, still waiting for an MRI appointment, and basically I am stuck in this chair, or on the couch, or laying in the bed, and I am basically reading and vegetating, and watching TV, and movies, and all sorts of things like that. Um, I prefer to read rather than watch movies or TV, but sometimes um, my knee hurts and I can't really focus on what I'm reading. But because of all of that, I have been very productive with my reading lately. I had, I was reading The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope, and this was a buddy read, it was supposed to be just for February, a buddy read with Katie from Books and Things and Amanda Center, and I fell very, very behind in it. I stopped around the, after the first volume, I only got about 50 pages in until a few days ago when I was kind of on bed rest and wasn't allowed to put weight on my knee. So um, I've read probably like three or 400 pages in the past few days. Yes. Um, but I'm still not done with this book. I still have this little bit left, which is actually not such a little bit. It's still about 100 pages left. Uh, but I am absolutely loving this book. For those of you who don't know, some people consider this to be Trollope's masterpiece. It is definitely his longest work. Um, my book is 952 pages. But it is really a nicely paced book. The book follows Mr. Melmont, this great colossal financier who just dominates the book in so many ways and his fraudulent railroad and all of the different people who get caught up in his schemes. And it also features the Carberry family, Lady Carberry, who is an aspiring novelist. It talks about Henrietta, her daughter, and her struggles with engagements and finding the appropriate suitor. It talks about what makes a good husband and what makes a good husband specifically in the Victorian era. It talks about appearances and social class and how one is perceived by others and how that can make all the difference in society. And it is just such a delightful book. Um, I obviously haven't finished it, but it is, it is great and um, it features a lot of really crooked and corrupt characters but they make for such an interesting read. I think this one has a little more of a serious tone than the Barsachar Chronicle series, which I still haven't finished. This trollop is a little break from that trollop, um, but I still have really, really enjoyed it. It's a lot more Dickensian in the way it weaves together all these different complex characters, and I, I highly recommend it if you're interested in Victorian literature or if you just really like Trollope. And then another book that has been sitting on my pile while my knee is being elevated and iced is this one, which I have not started yet. This is Revenge by Yoko Ogawa. Katie from Books and Things recommended this to me. It's a series of short stories that are supposed to be very dark and twisted, and I did not realize how dark and twisted they are supposed to be until I picked up this book and read the inside flap. You guys have to hear this one. An aspiring writer moves into a new apartment and discovers that her landlady has murdered her husband. Elsewhere, an accomplished surgeon is approached by a cabaret singer whose beautiful appearance belays the grotesque condition of her heart. And while the surgeon's jealous lover vows to kill him, a violent envy also stirs in the soul of a lonely craftsman. Desire meets with impulse and erupts attracting the attention of the surgeon's neighbor who is drawn to a decaying residence that is now home to instruments of human torture. 
murderers and mourners, mothers and children, lovers and innocent bystanders, their fates converge in an ominous and darkly beautiful web. Yoko Ogawa's Revenge is a master class in the macabre that will haunt you to the last page. So I am really excited for this book. It sounds like it takes every gothic trope that I can imagine, every like horror convention, and throws it into this very short series of short stories. So I cannot wait for this one. I'm sure I'll be talking to you more about this one in the very near future. And then my friend gave me this art book, which she had an extra copy of. It is the Hannah M. Adler collection, which is a collection of Victorian illustrations that is housed at Skidmore College, which is in New York. And this book talks about the importance of Victorian illustration in Victorian novels, um, especially when it comes to serialization and, you know, the question of whether authors illustrate their own works or whether they have an illustrator do it for them. It talks about Dickens' illustrations, Blake's own illustrations, Thackeray's illustrations, and it mostly features Cruikshank, uh, George Cruikshank, the illustrator. I think like 90% of this collection is Cruikshank, and it's just really interesting and beautiful to look at. I just want to show you some of my favorites that I've looked at in this collection so far. As I was saying, it talks about uh, authors who've illustrated their own work. So here's Songs of Innocence and Experience by William Blake. And here's a scene from Dickens's Pickwick Papers. And then, as I said, there's just a lot of Crookshank in here. Um, both of these are Crookshank, and it's really interesting to see the variety in his artistic talents and abilities. I mean, every single one by him looks like it could have been drawn by a different artist, I swear. And then the last one I'd like to show you is this one that I absolutely love. It's called A Fairy in Winter, and it is by Dorothy P. Lathrop. And I don't think many of the illustrators in this book are females, but um, she is. So I kind of want to do more research on her, to be honest, and on some of the other um, illustrators that I haven't really heard of before in this, in this book. Um, it's a really interesting book. Victorian illustration in general is just fascinating, especially in the way it was used in serialization and the way it enhanced the reading of the novel. I feel like a lot of times, no, actually, I can't really think of any, you know, mainstream novels that have illustrations in them unless they're for children nowadays. So, yes, it's just an interesting topic. So I've also been reading, or rather listening to, the audiobook of Pride and Prejudice, narrated by Rosamund Pike. Now, I've been loving it, and I don't think I've actually told you guys this, but I usually listen to an audiobook on the way to work. And of course, because I'm supposed to be resting my knee and not working right now and not putting any weight on my knee, I cannot actually drive right now. So I have not been listening to that audiobook. But I really, really am enjoying it, and Rosamund Pike is just bringing new life to Pride and Prejudice for me. So, as usual, I have not made much progress at all in my paper crane, so I will kind of quickly uh, work on that right now. But thank you guys so much for watching. I would love to hear uh, what you have to say about any of the books I've talked about, about any of the things I've talked about um, in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you're reading. I'd love to hear what's going on in your lives. And... Um, until next time, I look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Bye!